Welcome to another episode of the Global Smash Hit, Senior Bitches, where we celebrate women over 50 who are crushing it in the universe, and we're actually daring to age like in public. It's kind of revolutionary. You should really join us. Now, here is a caveat for today. I also do fabulous men over 50 who are crushing it in the universe. Because let's face it, we're all kind of senior bitches on some level. Now, my first male senior bitch was my childhood best friend, David Furnish. We connected over what it was like being those 14-year-old outsiders who were relegated to the backcourts of life at our local tennis club. We were ostracized. Well, he went on to do okay for himself. He started Rocket Entertainment. He created a global platform for HIV AIDS research. And he just won an Oscar for his husband's film, at Dodger Stadium, you know Elton John, that guy? Okay, well today I have another male senior bitch and he is a great one. He is super cool. I met him about a year and a half ago where he was like driving or steering or chartering. I'm not quite sure of the term, but I was on this fabulous yacht. I know I sound super obnoxious already. Anyway, I'm not sure of the technical term, but he was most definitely the man in charge. He ran a very tight ship. And he was very, very professional. And truthfully, I was a bit scared of him because I did not want to get kicked off the boat. Like he was so no nonsense. Um, I also got to spend time with him over the six weeks at sea. And the person that I got to know was multifaceted. Single dad, adventurer, nomad, environmentalist, and a newbie to the fame game. He's also a total babe and a bit of a sex symbol, but so am I. So we kind of were kindred spirits in that way together a little bit. And he's embarking on a whole new chapter, navigating waters that he probably could not have imagined he'd be navigating over 50. I'm also dying to ask him, what's it like to age for a man in a man's world? I'm really curious about that one. So please welcome my guest today, my second male senior bitch, the glorious Captain Jason Chambers from Below Deck. Hello, Jason. Hey, Mary Jo, how are you? Good, how are you? Got a lot to live up to on, from your first guest, haven't I? Yeah, you, no, oh, you're fabulous. <laughs> you're both fabulous in different ways, in absolutely different ways. But I wanted to thank you for doing this because you're in Bali. Yes, yeah. And you just dropped your daughter off at school. Yeah, I've raced back. You finally got me to sit down and um, take a breath. And I've been away for a while. So um, when I come back, it's um, it's all it's all systems go. I'm sure a lot of people understand what it's like to be a parent. Um, but being a parent to be away for quite some time and come back, it's uh, you've got to try and pick up the threads and get back in. And and um, yeah, that's morning routine is back in play. Good, good. Now, so when we went on our walk. Do you remember we went on our walk after we saw those goddamn Komodo dragons, which scared the shit? Like, I just did not get the bang out of the Komodo dragons. They really scared me. Um, but we went to the Komodo dragon park and then you and I, I, well, the whole group went to the waterfalls and we had a lovely walk down the hill. And I got to know a bit about your story, which was really fascinating. Like this oasis that you created in the Philippines, um, this new chapter with the below deck. And also, to your point, not being able to see your daughter during COVID. And I mean, it was visceral when you talked about it, like the effect that it had on you. And the day that I left, I remember you were ecstatic, not because I was leaving, but because we were in Bali and you were able to take your daughter to school. I think that that was your reunion with her. What was that like? Because it was so difficult to be apart. Yeah, we, we we did catch up prior to that, but we did spend a year and a half away from each other. I was on a boat and couldn't get to Philippines. She couldn't leave. And yeah, it was probably the most um, difficult time. Um, I wasn't expecting to be a father. I was over 40 and it, and it happened and I'm glad it did. And we started building a paradise in the Philippines. She grew up there. But then for COVID to hit and me being away and not being able to get back, it just resonated what the priorities in life are. And definitely being with her at this young age is my priority. So I have given up a hell of a lot of things financially, driving big boats, uh, taking on new adventures. And that's why Below Deck, when it came up, it was an opportunity for me to uh, go down a different path and steer away from yachting as much as what I was. Because being away for 10 months, a year is not good for any family. No, no, Def it's it's a, it's unbearable. Definitely not good for no relationship. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you like 
am I speaking out of school? Like you have a great relationship with uh, your daughter's mother, right? Like you were very respectful and lovely around that relationship. We definitely, definitely have um, grown to co-parent in a, in a good way. Um, but to be totally, totally honest, I must admit, um, as time goes on, a bit of resentment and a little bit of, um, yeah, hurt comes into it as, as we both get older, you know, what, what could have been, what should have been. And um, we have to navigate through these waters now as well, which um, which is ha which happens. We, we're touching on new waters where we're just trying to focus solely on our daughter's uh, well-being. Yeah, I but think still, it's called life. It's called life. Yes, it, it definitely is. It definitely is. It, it can be a shit show. So here you are over 50 and you're on this exciting ride of success and adventure. So I, I'm curious how the below deck thing came in because to me, there's such different disciplines. Like, okay, you are so focused when you're on that boat and you're charting that whole thing all over. And we were in the Indian ocean and I think I went down under for two days being seasick, but the responsibility, then you got the wayward crazy guests on the boat, which is like, I mean, it's a circus, right? It's insane. So you have to be so professional. And then now you're in the environment filming it. like. What's that like for you? Because you're, you're, you obviously have to be so focused and disciplined to do what you do. And then to be in front of the camera and do you just pray they edit you well? Like, how do you handle that? Well, I, the reason I like the show so much is it's none of it's scripted. Uh, it's only up to the editing. And that's only going to follow the true storylines that evolve during the six weeks. Now, six weeks doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're doing six weeks straight with three day charters, with one day turnarounds and the crew are going out and they're having a few drinks and fatigue sets in, uh, any facade they walked in with or any persona they actually wish they would actually have on camera uh, usually comes away and the truth comes out. As a captain, look, I don't think I could have done this 10, 15 years ago. I would have been a little bit different. Um, I think my experience in diverse situations and also with having a family um, and learning patience. And I think definitely my experience in the last 10 years cruising around remote locations has learned me to find out what the true meaning of life is with visiting villages in Papua New Guinea, uh, helping out, um, wonder, seeing what super yachting is all about rather than being in the Mediterranean, sitting on anchor and looking fab, going to beautiful villages and and learning about how these people live has made me a better captain. So this see, these seasons that were below deck, we're bringing together a group of people that have never worked together on a boat I've never driven before. <gasps> and we confront uh, absolutely everything in real time. And I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. It's testing. It's very testing. Oh my God. So it's it's going to be action packed. So it's a, it's a boat you've never driven before. Yeah. So every sea, every every season, it's a new boat. Mostly, uh, mostly it is a new boat and a um, new crew. And you might have one or two return crew, but you've yeah. got all these you've got all these personalities coming in. You're not walking into an established situation where there's an environment already set up. They're going to find their own, or try to find their own, or make their own environment on the boat. So you have to deal with these personalities, and you have to get them to work, and you have to get a warm result, and it's tough. Well, I was like a passenger on the yacht. I've been on a few yachts. Your yacht wasn't the first yacht that I was on. It was like the second or third. But to your point, the characters of the guests, that's a whole different dynamic. And then the crew, I, I loved your crew. I mean, your crew was just such a cast of characters again, right? And you're like, you're kind of modulating, like taking care of all of these personalities on the boat. I know that if we wanted to come talk to you, we had to make a meeting. Like you had great boundaries. You were really great at that. You have to be though, right? Uh, yes, I try to, I, I honestly, I try to create a comfortable environment, very Australian laid back environment. Um, but to, to establish some discipline at the start, you've got to try and get them into line. And um, being on a boat where, look, outside of below deck is different. Um, you can create and, and actually stipulate the environment that you want. Um, and you've got you usually got some core crew and they understand that. And anyone new coming in, any crew that are new coming into that understand that environment. Below deck's different. It's from the start, nobody knows the boat, nobody knows the crew. So they're all trying to work themselves out. So they're totally different uh, kettles of fish, um, aspects of yachting. But 
look, I think I've learned a lot from life and my below deck experience is a testing of all patience and empathy. Yeah, because you can't go anywhere. You're stuck. Yeah, definitely, right? definitely. You cannot go anywhere. I can't even imagine the hookups on below deck. I got to watch. I got to tune in because stuff has got to go on. Right? Look, uh, all the franchises, uh, the 10 years of it's going, it has a lot of the drama is based around that. And yeah. I feel like our franchise has been a little bit different. We didn't have any hookups in season one. Season two, we had um, some 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 love stories developing, and um, I, I in like three that. days in three days. Well, it's six weeks. It's six weeks. So oh, okay. are you talking about okay. The oh, crew? you're talking about the crew. So the crew yeah. develops. So, oh, yeah. okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the crew. So the crew gets to know each other, and um, look, the franchises before I must admit are, are very alcohol and fatigue fueled. Um, I would I would say our franchise is a little bit different than the others, and I'm trying to lean towards that way. I'm trying to say, okay, there is drama. It doesn't have to be all around alcohol. It can be around about the actual genuine aspect that these crew are trying to fight their way or find their way through this long, hard season of six weeks. And I think there's a story to be told there rather than the story of um, getting absolutely wasted, coming home, jumping into someone's room and then um, and then finding another one in four weeks' time and, and that being a drama. Um, that's not real life. It actually wouldn't really work um, on a boat. Um, as a captain, they would a, a captain would kind of come down on that anyway because he knows it's just going to be detrimental to the whole aspect. So I think our franchise, franchise is a little bit different where we allow them to show the story of crew developing. And yes, there will be love interest for sure, but it's kind of more genuine love interest. And I've seen that in season two um, with a couple of, couple of crew members that actually did really want to, um, you know, have a boyfriend, girlfriend actually dynamics rather than just a fling. So it's good. Well, I, I was looking for a boyfriend, girlfriend dynamic on the yacht, but it didn't happen for me, but that's okay. <laughs> it was fun. I had such a blast. Um, it was just amazing. And to your point, like all the interesting places we went, like I remember at the end of the day after the Komodos, sorry, I don't get the Komodos, but we when we went into the village, it was really interesting because all the houses were on stilts, right? Because I guess the Komodos run all over the islands and they can't eat you. And we walked through and remember the kids were playing yeah, soccer yeah. and the sun was setting and it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I felt I felt like home there. It's um, I have visited a lot of Indonesia, especially West Papua, Papua New Guinea, and done a lot of villages. So, and I live in the Philippines. I live with the village um, in a, in a village, small village. Um, my daughter grew up in a village, so I kind of feel at home amongst all that. And that's the sort of cruising um, that I've been doing the last ten years is remote locations. I get excitement. I get so excited out of seeing um, people in their in their raw form. Yeah, I mean, I love Lombok. I think that, I mean, I just love Lombok and the Gilly Tees and just, it was just in the Vespers at night and it was just, um, it was just another world. That whole travel experience was amazing. So I'm so curious to find out about what's the aging process like for a man? I'm going to take notes on this. So what's it like? I mean, you're aging like a mofo. I mean, you're, you look incredible. I know you're super fit. I've seen you with your shirt off. Sorry, I have. Um, but what is it like for you mentally, physically? Do you feel any shifts? Like how, you're over 50, um, but what is that like for you? Um, what's it like for me? Um, I, look, I'm, I'm doing a lot of inner work and a lot of breath works. I'm doing, I'm trying, I'm eating a lot better. I did have a bit of an accident about two years ago where I got staph infection from swinging, swimming in Bali. I got an infection and um, over the course of a year, I took a lot of antibiotics and then it actually I got hold of a big um, section of my foot and I had to have an operation. So I realized um, then that antibiotics um, in such big doses are definitely not the way to go. So I looked towards what can I eat uh, daily that is beneficial for me and I'm doing that. I wake up, I have my routine, I do my breath works, I do movement, I do a little bit of yoga. I don't do, um, I, I don't, I hate going to the gym for an hour and an end. It just bores me watching all those guys in there with ripped muscles, drinking all their protein and talking to themselves. Ew, ew. Um, with their yeah, nipples look, hanging out and whatever they do there, it's just, no, no, thank you. I always have this funny thing that, um, you know, the, the men in these days, or, or the boys, however you want to call them, they're in the gym 
nice. They look great, great ripped, ripped muscles and everything. But they will tell their mate how good they are look, but uh, how how good they look and how great their muscles are. But a woman will walk in the room with nice shoes or nice hair, but they they won't turn around and say, "Hey, nice shoes and nice hair." Um, yeah, chivalry is fading away. Why? Uh, I, I, I think chivalry is fading away a little bit. Uh, I think they're more impressed with uh, how good each of their, how how good their mates look and. I, I find that amusing that, um, you know, that the smallest comment uh, or noticing, a, you know, someone's earrings or, or a lady's hair or shoes is, is oh. getting, I don't see it these days. Oh, my God. It is such a lost art form and I don't see it either. And do you think that men don't do it because they're insecure? They're just insecure. They're scared or they're just so self-absorbed. Like what is going on? Because there is, that is it. That is a disappearing art form everywhere here. I mean, LA is a shit show, but why is that? Do you think? Well, I don't think chivalry is something you can make up. It's a, it's a, it's an intuition and an intuition is a subconscious experience. So if you either wake uh, grown up with it or, 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 um, or understand it, um, it's there. So, you know, a, a lady walks in and she's got a nice dress on. You don't just say, I'm going to uh, compliment her on a dress because she's coming towards me and she looks great. Um, you turn around and just go, oh, that's a nice dress. It's there. Uh, so it's not something you it's something you can train yourself to do, obviously, but it's something we've grown up with um, and it's handed down. I think, you know, my father was a wonderful man and he'd always um, compliment a woman. And, and I think the generation's going to get lost. I just hope that... Um, we can actually train it before it's too late to, um, I, and also it could be a lot to do with women's power. Now that men are feeling a little bit, uh, suppressed and actually, um, uh, to speak out, but that's even more important that we should uh, appreciate that and, and still be ourselves. You know, there's nothing wrong with being masculine. Um, females are masculine as well. We, uh, I'm a very feminine person, you know, I've got, um, a lot of feminine qualities. You know, I move with the wind. I, I'm very earthy and, um, I appreciate my feminine qualities, but I can still be masculine too and hold the fort down and be the cement for her, for my partner. And she can be the cement for me as well. So women's power is definitely something that we need to appreciate and learn to balance with. Oh my God, I just fell in love with you and I want to be your cement, but we're too far apart. We can't do that. But um, <laughs> I, I agree with you. I agree with you totally. And it's the last art form. And actually, you know, um, there's a lot of books being written on this that actually when men and women assume their roles, you know, the, the, the masculine and the feminine, and obviously they're going to intersect a little, but they're defined roles for a reason. It doesn't make you any less of a man or a woman if you can appreciate those differences. And I think we're so there, the lines are getting so blurred. Like, it's really nice right. chivalry. It's really nice, you know, to feel that you're taken care of. And some of those traits are masculine, some of them are feminine. Um, yeah, there's, it is. there's a good book. There's a good book, a way to a superior male, which I read not. I read a while back now, probably probably about five years ago. And I actually read that book, and I thought, why isn't this book given to every teenager um, male um, and learnt in school? Because it made me realise, okay, that's that's fine. Um, I can be who I am. I can be um, nomadic and moving around, and so can she. And and when it's time for me to 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 say, listen, you go off. You be you. Um, I've got I've got the fort. I've got the I've got the house. So I'm going to look after it. You. I understand where you're at. Um, I I'm not going to be jealous in that. I, I'm not going to be jealous of that. And I think getting older, I've realised jealousy is a, a big curse. Ownership's a big curse, and um, I'm steering away from that. And you know, I've got one one true love in my life, and that's my daughter. Um, I haven't got time. For I haven't got time for, for for more at the moment. And that's the only true love I believe in at the moment. I don't believe there's there's one love in a relationship. Um, I think we need to actually be, the only love is ourselves. And then from that, we can share what we've got. It's, um, and, you know, I, I could, I love my daughter 100%. At the moment, I don't have time to share any love for someone else. So I'm not going to pretend that I'm going to be with someone else and long distance texting and I travel around on my own. Okay, map. okay. I'm not going to pressure you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're fine. Justify my nomadic lifestyle. 
Yeah, no, but you're right. Like that is really the issue. And and we all learn this lesson, especially as we get older. You have to have a great love affair with yourself. You really have to. I think to be in a situation with anybody, you really have to have that connection or you're just going to fly by the wind, right? It's just, it's, it's you know, you really have to be solid. And I think that's going back to what you asked me before. Like how am I, you know, what's the better, good way to age? And I think that's um, a, a healthy diet. Um less stress which i've got less stress over the last probably um 10 years i i was stressed the last probably the last two decades of look i got a captain's job when i was 28 i didn't even know how to drive a boat i was the engineer on the boat and the mexican family asked me to be the captain because the boat was for sale and it didn't sell it was a 110 foot boat i was 28 years old didn't even know how to steer the thing and um i took off to the med and taught myself to be a captain for well, I've been 20 odd years now. So I went through a huge transition of insecurities um, of being a captain, calling myself a captain, surrounding myself with people that I knew that were better than me. So then there's that fight of managing, but actually knowing that I'm I'm not as good as them, but actually surrounding, trying to find the right people. And then it's not until, and then driving really big boats, up to 300 foot boats for some, uh, I've worked for some great families for a long period of time. Then my shift changed when I met someone, had a child and moved to the Philippines and came back and became uh, and started just focusing on remote locations and being a better captain in, in uncharted waters. And then I realized, re realized that I wasn't just driving a so-called bus around the Mediterranean. I was actually doing great captain stuff and um, became better. And then I, my confidence grew. So my stress levels went down and I didn't have to be a a yeller and screamer on you know on the helm which um insecurities and, and inexperience brings I, i'm more of a empathetic captain now and you know if you want to die by the sword you can you know if you want to hang yourself you can um there will be an end but i'm not going to scream and yell at you to try and overcome my um lack of information that i've given you or inexperience that i have all my insecurities so my stress levels have grown, gone, down, have gone down. I eat a lot better now. I focus on my breathing in the morning and I touch, I, I get in contact with myself early. Yesterday, um, I'm all over the place at the moment. I just came back, I've got my daughter and I just, everything was all over the place. So I actually went to have a sit down with a friend of mine and talk about the moon that's hap happening at the moment. It's a Libra yes. moon. Yes. An Aries moon. And it's actually, everything is in my sector. So that explained to me why everything's like this. I'm not sleeping well. Um, you know, should I be here? Where should I be? Um, but then I have some answers. So I'm, I'm more comfortable now. I had a good night's sleep. And I, I know what's, going, what's ahead of me. So uh, there's exciting times. So just get through these um, unsettling. But getting to know that and understanding that and having that ability to look more beyond things and be a little bit more spiritual and a little bit more holistic and um, eating well and breathing well. And I, I just think that's kind of what's happening at the moment and making me feel a lot younger and, and be a bit more in touch with myself. Well, I think too, that when you start to do all that work on yourself, like the stuff that you're going through, it could be astrology and stuff that's happening in the universe, but it's also you like stuff's coming up like, Ooh, okay. I got to deal with this, whatever this is, like you start becoming, you know, more aware of it. So you get this incredible confidence, like you just jump on a boat and you're driving it. And like you, you have 20 years under your belt, you become a father, um, you know, successful career, you're navigating. I love all the, the shipping terms we're using. Um, and all the stuff you're talking about is inner, which is beautiful. And really, that is the ultimate journey. But I have to ask. So for men, I'm just so curious, do you worry about losing your looks? Are your looks important? Like you are like you're a babe. OK, you are a babe. So there was obviously some importance put on your looks or just, I'm just sure women just came, you know, into your uh, hemisphere, but do they worry about it the same way? Is it something that you're conscious of at this point? Or I'm just so curious. Again, my pen, I'm ready, go. Well, season two, the trailer and the promos and everything was all based around, um, uh, you know, my looks and stuff. And it, it was so uncomfortable. It's mm -hmm. so uncomfortable. Because you're shy. Cause you're kind of shy. I think you're shy, I, a little shy. I'm shy until I've had a couple of tequilas and then I'm all over the place. It's great. But, um, <laughs> but I'm still and not, you know, I'm not on the dance floor trying to look at me. I'm, I'm actually break out, a, you know, 
break out just i just i'm happy i'm happy you know like you know people say oh do you want to smoke a marijuana i'm like oh, no i don't know why i said because oh, it makes me too happy <laughs> and they're like so i'm like it's just <laughs> i i have enough happiness within myself um to jump on the dance floor when i want and be an absolute um and dance dance to my own tune and i was so uncomfortable with um with all the shirt off and all that and and it was hard um and I don't see it. Am I afraid of losing my looks? Well, I've got them. I'm not. I'm actually more scared of losing. I'm more scared of losing my libido than I am my looks, to be quite honest, as I get okay. older. I wanted to ask you that. I wanted to ask you that. That was one of my questions. I know as we get older, our libido goes up and down, no pun intended. Now, for women, like I was, you know, Jason, I go on and on about this. I've been on a dating spree, like, you know, and and women, it kind of, I feel it's going up and we don't, you know, it's not so technical for us. So for men, it's a whole different ball game so do you feel like do you worry about that or do you feel any change in in that definitely a change and and I do worry I don't stress about it that's for sure life's going to accept it but I'm going to do what I can to um, understand it along the way and probably one thing that happened which was significant um about three years ago three and a half years ago I, I was with a girl for quite some time and um she has hadn't had an orgasm for quite some time either and I started doing some research. Uh, I wanted to know. And I, I learned so much about um, a, the G-spot, women's G-spots, you know, like, you know, there is three of them. It's the G-spot's just an umbrella. Um, how do we, how do we get to... There's three? Well, there's A, A, E and O, is it? Okay. Um, yeah. So Will you send I, me I'm notes not... after this? Just send me, I'm like, just, yeah, just but, the yeah, basics. Whatever. But I did learn a lot, and then obviously I learned a lot about um, uh, touch and 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 more tantric and and more breathing, a lot of breathing. Um, so it's, then I learned a lot about myself as well, a thing called sexual kung fu, which is very Tao kind uh, explained, um, where I learned a lot about uh, personal ejaculation, holding it off. Um, not ejaculating. Edging? Not letting, is that called edging? 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 Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Not letting energy go and um, holding that energy. And and obviously a lot of um, like Kegel exercises for myself um, or Kegel exercises like myself. Um, and that taught me um, a lot about restraint, um, keeping my energy, saving my energy, um, which allowed me to give more to my partner um yeah. but not for not for my own the not for my own ending um if you know what i mean i do and, <laughs> and look over over a period of short period of time um yeah we got to a point where um yeah she yeah she was having an orgasm every time if i if if we chose to and 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 that brought a lot of her back too and i've i've gone on to just keep doing things that um, are good for my libido after that. And that is one is a lot of um, a lot of massaging, um, you know, I, a lot of holding back. Um, they say there's a term on when you should ejaculate as well in your, in, in your 20s, it should be so many times a month. In your 30s, it should be this many times a month. In your 40s, it should only be, you know, once every now and again. And, and that is... Um, and that is true to form. Um, there's, yeah, just hold it. Don't. Um, it's gonna. It keeps the energy inside you. Save it for a rainy day, and that will be a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> boy, boy, will it rain? Okay, so I'm learning a lot. Okay, yeah, that's really interesting. So again, it all goes back to your mental health, your spiritual well-being, your physical health. Like it sounds like everything you're doing, you're really conscientious of being in the present moment, experiencing it um delaying it like really really conscious of your place in the world I'm learning look if where when you get a life's experience the rest you the rest is you read about einstein said that and i stand by it and look even in relationships what i've learned is um through through past failed relationships and um you know dishonesty i suppose and and traveling away and and you know Honesty is the most valuable thing we've got. Um, 
for instance, about three years ago or two and a half years ago, I, I met a lady, just came out of a relationship and we had a lovely dinner and it was amazing. And we're still friends to this day, but things were developing really nicely. Um, however, she lived a long way away. Um, and but it was stipulated at the dinner during our conversations about how look I'm I'm I can't give anything to someone I've got my daughter I live away I've got this new path in my life but yeah we did have a big connection and but I'm not going to sit there on the phone and and prop and promise these things that I can't deliver and right. so out during our meeting she realized that um she needed to work she needed to work on herself after this relationship she broke she broke up with and then she met someone else and i just told her just slow down you need to understand yourself first don't jump in oh yeah he's great he wants me to do this he wants to fly me there i'm like look just slow down you've got a lot of work to do they've been in this relationship for a year and a year now year and a bit and they are i only spoke to her yesterday she's she's absolutely over the moon but still holding her own and she said it's working better like if I didn't meet you and have that conversation I would have jumped straight back into it would have just been full on this is the one everyone thinks the white picket fence has to be there and I always say to people I know it's very oh well it's not, pretty dark but I say look who, who you're with at 25 is not who you're going to be with at 35. so I always say to these young in love couples because I was married when I was young um just just chill just enjoy yourself um don't think that this has to be the retirement relationship like and i th i'm now i'm saying to people that are 35 just now you need to learn yourself and don't jump back into one i'm learning a lot about relationships through my own experiences i suppose i suppose that's not getting back to the question of staying youth but i think it all adds up a little bit of um, a little bit of health and getting to know myself more and getting to know um, definitely not what to get into uh, again, which I can't promise and put stress on you. Well, it's called wisdom. I think that that's what we get as we get older. And there's something you're doing that is very revolutionary and that men don't do in general. You're transparent. Can you teach some of the men you know to be like that? Like, transparency yeah. just be honest just be honest yeah. I actually uh, saw a friend of mine in Toronto he's a total stud like you a bit older than you and he's in a, in a he was in a relationship but he's in a phase right now he just wants to have a physical relationships with women he can't commit he, he travels a lot and he's just being really upfront and honest and he will not go back to his old tricks and it's the 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 effect on his mental health and his well-being because he is open with these women right off the bat and he doesn't create this horrible situation and stress for himself and he's really enjoying it and if they're not into it it's like no attachment it's fine but this is where I'm at right now like transparency is essential and men seem to have a problem with that a little bit am I projecting yeah, I'm, I'm I'm finding it um a lot easier I I'm having great relationships with people people just from um an emotional aspect rather than physical so I'm like every morning I go walking with um uh, a good friend of mine she's turning out to be one of my best friends I walk with her every morning and um we just chat 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 and um and we're building up a great relationship um but yep the she's away at the moment and I went out with her husband the other day um and had a bit of a night out and I, I I'm, I'm enjoying those relationships rather than um, even delving into the physical relationship because I just know that there is no such word as a relationship in any form if it's physical. Um, it's only going to end in someone getting hurt. As much as, much as you're open to it at the moment, that's how I feel. Um, if I'm trying to have a physical relationship with a girl at the moment, it, like let's just talk about what it is, a one night stand or, or a couple of night stands, that's fine. Get the edge off. Um, however, I tend to need to connect with a person at the moment um, to try and get to that. And that that leads to wanting, needing, uh, where are you? And I can't deliver that at the moment because I'm traveling so much and I've got my daughter. So I'm very cautious, especially with what's going on with the show and everything. Um, I'm getting more introverted as well. Um, I'm not going out as much at all. I don't. Um, and I'm 
hopefully someone will come over and um, come up come up in front of me soon and I'll have be able to fit time in with her and my daughter. Uh, but it's not there at the moment. Hey, God, I'm learning so much. I love this. I love this perspective. I think it's incredibly healthy. Uh, and uh, there's another word. It's like inspiring, like good for us. I think that way a bit. I'm not as well adjusted as you, okay? Um, but I'm sort of along those lines of where you're at. And um, so aside from a woman's physical qualities, what's the most attractive quality that you look for in a partner, uh, in, in a woman? Uh, apart from physical? Um, yeah. Look, I... Apart from I'm blonde, not... Canadian, living blonde, in Los Angeles. Beautiful glasses, yeah, intelligent. <laughs> yeah. Um, witty. Yeah. Um, Humorous, yeah, yeah, yeah. tall, yeah. Elegant. yeah, yeah. I got it. Aside um, from that, I look. I have. It, it's got to be nature. It's got to be nature driven. Um, and look, because I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm creative in many forms. I'm, I'm very vanilla in that way. When it, but I actually really adore, um, a partner that's you know, spiritual nature, environmentalists, uh, caring, but still, you know, very smart and and witty, um, open, not jealous. You know, I want to be able to walk down the street and hand in hand with, a, you know, my partner and, and a girl, girl walks past or a guy walks past and just go, gee, wow, she's, she's gorgeous. Um, and that means absolutely nothing. You know, I like that. That's kind of the person I need to be with. Not that I do that often, but yeah, if you're sitting at someone and, and there's a very handsome man over there, even I could say, gee, that's a handsome lad. And she could say the same thing. And that's that's security and that's what I want, confidence. And from a physical point, a larger woman with a nice thong on is a lot yeah. more attractive is a lot more attractive than a gorgeous model over there who's insecure. Like I would, I a, a larger woman on a dance floor in a bikini, <laughs> in, in a bikini at a beach club, laughing and smiling and enjoying her life and not giving two Fs about anything is so much more attractive than that woman over there that looks absolutely amazing that's actually taken selfies of herself. Um, that That from a physical point of view, that is the attraction, is the confidence. So I suppose to answer your question, I need someone just with confidence in themselves. Not all, it's not all external. It's an inside job, um, right? Everything you're talking about, it's like to see that somebody's engaged in the life force, like because nobody's actually engaged in the present moment now because they're taking selfies or filming stuff or, you know, everything is like a, a, a production. But I love when people are so comfortable in their own skin. It's like just the joy for life emanates from them. It's an energy. It's energy. It's energy. You walk into, and this is where I learn a lot about breath works and everything. And without getting all spiritual and holistic, and which you don't have to be, and I'm not saying I am, but the evidence is there that if we are looking after ourselves um, and we're confident in ourselves, that we are vibrating out energy at a level that is attracting anything you want or people that you want. And you know that. Look, you, you know when a friend of yours who you love, can't wait to hang out with walks into the room and you light up and you're getting her energy. Um, that's the same as when looking at a total stranger that's there, that's just enjoying themselves or walks into a room and just go, wow. Um, look, I'm, I'm, at, I'm in Bali. I'm staying at a villa now. I've got a little place getting renovated. And I walked in here and there was a lady in the reception and I sat down and I walk, I just straight away just started talking to her. And normally I wouldn't, but we just, our conversation just went boom. And um, we just, ch -ch -ch -ch, and they said, oh, Mr. Chambers, your room's ready. I said, oh, in a minute, I'm just enjoying this conversation. And then they walked up 10 minutes later and they said to her, oh, your room's ready. She goes, uh, I'm just enjoying this conversation. By the time we finished, she just came out of a bad relationship. She's over here. She'd been over here for two weeks. Um, and the conversation, I just felt that we needed to have that conversation about, you know, you're here now. Think about yourself, you know, you don't, you know, you left something in your past, that's great. And we'll just end this great conversation straight away. What great, what brings two people together to be able to have a conversation to total strangers than uh, the energy that was required? And I'm, this, I'm the same when you see these confident people being themselves, it's just the energy is just vibrating out of them and you just want to be part of that. There's yeah, so much. It's, 
the one getting selfies over there that you just know, well, there's nothing coming out of that. No, like the energy. Well, it's also quantum physics, right? Like if you study it, like somebody who walks into the room with that type of energy and everybody wants connection. And I assume, well, I know that the, you know, what you're talking about, and I feel it too, the older I get, the more we open up to that, you know, and I think it's about being transparent and authentic and, 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 and not being scared of it to be open to it. Like it's, I equate it to a frequency, like a radio frequency, if you have that antenna for life, like it's amazing what comes to you, like what you find out in a day, what people will give up to you if you're open and you can, you know, it's, it's everywhere. Totally. I, if I, if I change my shifts here in Bali and, and really put my head down, as I said, I don't go out much. I don't go out drinking much. It's uh drop off at nine o'clock, pick up at three. Uh, so through the day, I, I do some physical stuff, but if I'm in the middle of a low, or if I get up to a board and do some breath works, and if I start really moving towards ice baths and doing some good health stuff, uh, these people just these people just turn up out of nowhere. Um, I was at my daughter's school and I was just in crossroads, or should I go back to Philippines? I don't know if it's got nothing here. Bali's, you know, it's really not doing it for me. And then I changed my shift for about two weeks and I was at my daughter's school and this lady was talking to me. She just moved from Longbok. And a week later, I was talking to another gentleman and he said, you should talk to this guy. He's got these um, building blocks made out of recycled uh, plastic, building all these schools in Lombok. And I said, well, that's kind of, that kind of interests me because I was in Philippines and I had a lot of plastic waste and I built a resort, spoke to him. They've built a hundred schools out of 400 that were knocked down in 2018. I've got a school wow. myself. I've got a school myself with 171 children, which we no bathrooms. And this week, this week, we just got 80% of my donations for my, for, for the school. So in May, we're going to start building a school for 171 children based off the fundraising that I did because I met these people and I, it's, they're not coincidental that I meet the people that I need to meet. And, no. and that's because. And that lady that was sitting over there, I don't know why we spoke at the school. She wasn't next to me. I just walked over to her and then we're standing near her. And then we next stroke, stroke up a converse, striked up a conversation. Next minute, she's she has a foundation that's been going for 10 years. And I find out two weeks later, that's her. And I find out that's the wife of the gentleman that I was talking to. And it was just all married in. And now I'm a big um, uh, advocate for her foundation that's you know trying to build these schools out of like lego blocks that are 100 percent recycled waste made from 100 percent recycled waste and i've got a passion now so that's amazing what is it coincidence is god's imagination and work i mean like it's all about just when you are in that state you know when you're closed nothing nothing good can happen um yeah. you have a young daughter so i'm i'm curious what you wish for her and what is the most important thing you can teach her and by the way, I just want to say to you, you think that driving a yacht is hard with unruly gas? Wait until your daughter becomes a teenager, okay? That is going to be a real test, a real stress test. But you're raising a young woman in this world. And what is the thing that, what is the greatest gift you could give her as a dad? I'm, I'm learning that daily. Um, she's getting old very quick. And I'm glad blow decks come along. Um, financially, I'm obviously not earning as much as what I would be on a, a yacht as a captain working 12 months a year. However, I've thrown that up. I've thrown that up in the air. I've actually decided just whatever I get, um, I'll live off over the next uh, few years until she is 12. She's nine now, and spend these precious times with her because now's the time. I suppose the best gift I can give her right now is for me and her mother to be as close as a family as we can be um, and teach her that. Uh, the next thing is to, look, she's so respectful and so polite and she's got, she got, she's got that from a, you know, she's, she's genuinely, she grew up in the Philippines. She's got this giving, she's got this giving nature. Um, she just wants to give and she just wants to be everyone's best friend. And when they're not reciprocating, she feels a bit low, like she wants to be everyone's friend. I'm just trying to teach her that, you know, life's hard. You know, you can't be, you don't have to be everyone's best friends. And just, I'm trying to teach her to be secure herself, uh, to show her that she can do whatever she sets her mind out. But she, she's typical. She's like, I can't, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And then next minute 
she's riding a motorbike. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Next minute. Is that a female uh, thing? Is that a female thing? Do young boys do that? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know. You've got, you've, got the, you've got the people that, that just get out there and run into brick walls. And then you've yeah. got the people that follow and she's a follower and that's fine. Um, and I just want to teach her that you, know, you, you, you can try, you have to get, you have to keep doing things as a habit to try and get better. Um, yeah, look, I'm making dollhouses with her at the moment out of cardboard and glue. So um, that's what I've been doing for the last two nights. <laughs> you're, you're in there. Yeah, I think for young women, it's just, oh God, it's just confidence. It's just, you can be anything and you're beautiful no matter what you look like or your, you know, your dreams, everything is wide open to you. Like just to build their confidence, you know, in this, in this era of social media where their environment is so curated by perfection, you know, that is what I think is so hard on the young girls because it's impossible to attain that. They can't attain that. It's all fake. And just to be in love with themselves and their spirit, you know, and, and having a good uh, male role model is essential for girls. She, uh, she had a performance at school the other day and it's um, they do fire, fire dancing. Yeah. With, ho with hula hoops and sticks and everything. Um, it's amazing. They're nine years old. They go from seven to eight, nine, and they do a... You have to train, they have to go through classes, but they understand the appreciation of fire and they do a whole big performance with it and it's amazing. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I'm going to have a little girl that can go to Burning Man. And it's not until <laughs> I went to the performance last year that I realised the, the significance behind it. It's not just, it's about uh, facing your a fear. And it's also about spatial awareness as well. It's about looking after your partner that's around you. And there were so many aspects of this um, curriculum that I actually saw in it um not just the cool thing of you know spinning a fire around at nine years old a fire stick around I actually did see a lot and then this performance she threw a stick up in the air and she dropped it and then I thought oh then she picked it up and she threw it up even higher and she grabbed it and she continued on and on the yes. way home on the computer she I said oh, she said Papa I was so proud of myself tonight I went oh, there you go there you go. If if that's all you can learn um, in a year or a lifetime, um, that's enough for me. If she can continue on feeling proud of herself, we have a winner. You have a winner. And by the way, she picked it up again. She threw it up again and she picked it up again. She said, fuck this shit. I'm going to get this right. I'm doing right. it. So I that's determination. It. I love that too. Um, I have a few more questions for you and I'll let you go. Yeah. I could talk to you all day because I'm slowly yeah. falling in love with you. <laughs> but that's okay. It's good for me because it's aspirational. I'll put it on my mood board. This is the type hey, of man I want. Hey. This one. Um, what would you tell your younger self now when you look back uh, at maybe what your priorities were, your confidence level? We talked about this a little and where you're at now. Like what kind of advice? Like example, when I did talk to David Furnish, um, he was like in therapy for 30 years to love the 14 year old boy that he couldn't love, you know? And he said, finally, I can say it's okay. We did, we did good, but it took a long time. So I'm wondering what that's for you. I'm learning about human design. I'm a manifesting generator, uh, which means, and it's actually quite nice to, to be able to put a, a label on who I am in that regards. Now manifesting generator because I've always been worried that why haven't got a why haven't I got a passion where is my passion like people ask what is your passion I, I don't know I don't have a passion and now learning what human does human design is and a manifesting generator is right I understand I've got multiple aspects I'm going to chop and change all the time I'm a mechanic I'm a plumber I'm a professional footballer. I was an engineer on yachts. I'm a captain on yachts. Now I'm on TV. I was a barman. I was rolling sourdough during COVID. Um, you know, like I, I was- And a, a dad. You're a dad. And a dad. And, and I, will, I will just keep moving around and, you know, build a resort. And like, why can't I just sit still? Why can't I just have a relationship? Why can't I just be with a white picket fence? And, um, and then when I actually put a label on it, I, I really realized that's okay. It's who I am. It's fine. So if anything, I'd go back and um, tell myself that don't worry about what's ahead because the universe will give you what you need and don't try and search for something because you need to, you need to be fluid because that's who you are. Um, 
and I need to be fueled. And another analogy I've come up with myself in the last um, six months, I suppose, that came to me and I was like, I think we all try to walk up a stream against the current, against the current that's foot knee high, struggling, 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 because we've got to get to that end point because we've been determined that's where we've got to go. And that's what we have to do, whether it be an education or a degree or a job or, or you know, or, you know, family, four, four kids, white picket fence, two cars, whatever your end goal is, we've got to strive for that. And then you get to the end of that stream or river and it's actually just a trickle of water and it wasn't worth it. Was it what exactly what you wanted to do all your life to get there? And my, my, my analogy is the grass is greener on the other side, but you still have to mow the lawns. And if you turn around from that river and float down the stream and just steer it every now and again, where does it go to? It goes to an ocean and that ocean is full of opportunities, opportunities everywhere. Now that's what scares people. That scares people more because they don't, they don't know what's out there. They want to know what's there. But really, is it there when you get to the end or was it worth it? You know, it's actually so much better to go for the flow. And I've, if I could tell my 14 year old self anything, if it doesn't feel right or you have to just strive so hard against the grain to get it, it's not, it's not made for you. It's, you, you need to actually turn around and just sometimes just like, okay, I missed that train. I'll get the next one. Okay. Gee, I, you know that. That relationship didn't work out. I'm not going to force it for another four years, which I've done over and over for long relationships. Um, you know, I've had long relationships and I, I know that they should have been over half the time than they, then they went on, but you just force it. So my younger self is like, experience will give you the intuition. You need to live. However, when you start feeling it, um, don't go against it. Um, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be in any aspect. Well, it's like being so attached to the outcome, right? It's just tunnel vision. You're just so attached to the outcome, which by the way, you can control and life as we know, and that's the whole flow of energy, right? Like if you're in resistance all the time, but if you actually just give into it and it is terrifying, it's kind of like jumping off a cliff, right? Like when you just say, I'm gonna actually not try and control this, not that we could anyway, but I'm just gonna go with it. And you know, your nature is that, like your nature is to be fluid, it sounds like, and to try all these different things, right? That's That sounds like bread in the bone, which gives you like a huge bandwidth of yeah. experience, you know? So yeah. I'm for that, I like the fluid. I got married. I gave up a good football contract to get married when I was very young, um, very young. And um, my friend passed away uh, from cancer not long after that. And then me and my um, wife then realised that what are we doing? We're so young. And um, I started trekking off around the world. And and we reconnected about six months ago. Me and my ex-wife since we were 25. And so. Wow nearly 30 years later and we are talking on the phone like we are best friends like just so in tune and it's so nice to uh, have that connection back as a friendship and she's got a daughter she's got a son the same age as my daughter um she's done very well for herself she moved overseas as well so um we didn't fight it we we came to an end and i think having that relationship early or locking myself in that car in that with those blinkers on early plus my friend passing away early made me realize, and he died with uh, so much dignity and, um, you know, from cancer at a young age and had everything planned and went out with a bang. And I thought, I'm not going to let life slip away. There's so much more out there and I'm going to keep trying it and um, not hold back. And I'm still not going to, and it's keeping yeah. me young. And I suppose the secret of my youth obviously is looking after all these kids on the boat too as well. <laughs> you know, I, mm. Yeah, you know, if I go to Australia and I see my friends sitting in the pub with big fat bellies, drinking beer, complaining about their marriage, it just turns me right off. Like I'm like, no, I want to. Why? Wanna... That's so super sexy. Really? You don't want to sit down and talk about that? Wow. Okay, uh, that's weird. <laughs> I would. I, I'd rather climb a mountain or, or you know jump in the water or free dive or trail or, or explore or do something you know more adventurous and fun than sit and complain. Well, that's a good point of origin. I mean, it was painful at the time, probably your marriage breaking up and losing your friend, but it set you on this path, which is 
Incredible. So I always ask my guests, you've been a lovely guest. I'm so glad I harassed you for three months to be on this show. Hi, Jason. Oh God, here she is again. But you've been absolutely lovely. So, so honestly, thank you. Finding this time, finding this time to sit down and, we, you know, I was pretty busy working abroad and I couldn't have this time, but now I'm here and I've been back a week. I finally found this time to get in the chair and spend it with you. So it wasn't a matter of, it was just delaying it. It wasn't going to pay. I, I was supposed to pay. I was going to do it, Mary Jo. I really wanted to. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the time. That was do, and do it. And I was going to, I was going to stalk you until I got you, and we got you, and we're we're thrilled. And you have so many fans over here, and uh, so they'll be thrilled about this. So the two questions that I ask people are, what for you is the beauty in aging, and what is your motto, and has it changed over the years? Oh, question. Um, the beauty in a. Uh, in other people's beauty, me, my, me visualize, me physical. What's the beauty life? in aging for you? Because there, there is loss in it, right? Like when we get to this stage, like my parents are 87, 89, like there's things that come up in this landscape. So what is the beauty in getting older for you? What is the gift for you? The gift. Um, I'm, my gift is that I'm, I, my life's experience is, <sighs> I'm actually enjoying listening to other people go through um, hard. I think my my beauty at the moment is that I've actually lived a life uh, that I re realised that I've actually seen a lot of things, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And I think I'm, I'm passing my experience onto people. I feel like yeah. I'm meeting people that um, really need to be told that everything's okay and um and I, I feel like i'm a bit of a sounding board and i'm i know that i'm coming across people at right times in their life to actually um just tell them to fuck all the noise and just get on with it you everything's great you're great and you know there's a life out there you know you're not going to be scared you're only, you're only going to be better for it so i think my gift is my experience look we all wish I, our parents were always right like i look back and look at my <laughs> growing you know, you're just like, nah, nah. And my daughter does it now. Like, nah, nah, nah. And you look back and just go, everything they said was virtually right. I should just listen to mum and dad and I would have been, you know, <laughs> it would have been a lot different. Um, I think that's my beauty at the moment is being able to uh, use my life experience to to listen to other people and to be able to tell them that they're doing a great job, that they're fantastic. And um, don't worry too much. Uh, life is an amazing thing. So live it. Well, that's beauty because that's kindness and kindness is the best. That's kindness. And to listen, nobody listens. So that's a beautiful thing. I like that. Um, and your motto, your motto over 50, is it different from below 50? Uh, I don't feel over 50 at the moment. Um, I, just, <laughs> I, I know when I was 40 because my party was big enough to, <laughs> to remind me, but um, I haven't had one at 50. I haven't had the time. I think my motto over four, over fifty at the moment is um, I I I know I'm going to have to spend a, a little bit more time focusing on on health. Um, I know I'm probably at about seventy percent of where I want to be, and I think they call it Sniper's Alley. Have you heard of Sniper's Alley? No, no. It's an Irish, it's a, it's an Irish term. What you do between four, what you do between 45 and 55 is going to determine where you're going to be at 75 or 85. So um, I, I, I changed my shift at 45 and I've really, I'm in a good spot where I was 50. I just need to spend the next five years, I think, to actually bump it up a little bit more. Um, so my motto at 40 was live life to the fullest and die, you know, die, die hard, die young. But um, I think my, my motto now is um, take care of yourself, lots of sleep, um big sober moment so big sober moments in life and um really work hard between 45 and 55 so you can stick around for a long time my motto is to go visit jason <laughs> that's my motto <laughs> that's <fair. laughs> i love that beautiful well what this whole interview is like honestly it's a beautiful tribute to your daughter when she's older she should listen to it because her dad's pretty freaking amazing so we have loved having you today on Senior Bitches. You're only my second male senior bitch. You're going to be hard to top. And it's been just a joy talking to you. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciated it. 
I, I appreciate it. I, look, I, I knew that we, this would be uh, a lot less below deck, so I knew we'd probably get into the nitty gritty of it. So probably the delay or the postponing and being ready for it was um, me ready to sit down and, and, and chew the fat and spill the tea with you. So it was worth, definitely worth it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we will meet again. Yes. Yes. For sure. Thank I got you, some Jason. great photos. Got some great photos. I think you helped me um pick out a uh, bracelet oh. for my daughter time on the back of the boat. And I Yeah, we yeah. got those little shell boxes, remember yeah. for your daughter? Yeah. Like we remember the Pearl yeah. Frenzy? Remember yes. the Pearl Frenzy at the Komodo Park where I, I still I I should have worn them today. I literally have nine thousand pearls. I've never worn them again. But when you're when you're an Indonesian, they come up to the boat with pearls and you go to the pearl market, you buy pearls. <laughs> yeah, right? That's what you do. Cool. That's what we did. Okay, you stay safe. Okay, stay safe, stay healthy. You're looking fantastic. So thank you very much, and I, I really enjoyed this um, this podcast. I really did. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. Take care. Thank you. Bye.